Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we are back with the SAP IP Business Talks. Um, it's five o'clock CEST and uh, here in Europe. And um, I'm happy when you join us. This is a LinkedIn live show. That means um, I'm talking with my guest today and it would be absolutely great when you give us your perspectives your uh, questions, comments live in the show. And when it is anyhow uh, doable, I will pick it up and uh, ask uh, Maria about that issues. So um, typically, you know that I do not um, present my guest. My guest is doing that on, in this case, her own. Um, I just want to mention something, some some aspects which which uh, are on the IP Business Academy and which interferes on what Maria is doing on LinkedIn and what I'm doing there. So first of all, she's a lecturer at the IP Business Academy in our diploma program with the EPO. Um, she has different lectures there. One is making business success sustainable. Very interesting topic. Uh, then we have IP rights for products and services. And we have a dedicated lecture on mediation from her. That's the, whole, that's the first thing. She's lecturer. Then she is also a book author. She published uh, recently her book, IP, The Key to Your Competitive Advantage, which I like extremely <laughs> wonderful because um, I like the title because that is really something which which we talk in the MEPLM a lot about in, in the master uh, program. And she attended that. And um, I'm not saying that anything what is written in the book uh, is, is an idea from the program. But what I'm saying is I like the style of thinking, which the book, uh, the spirit, which the book um, uh, is presenting. And therefore, I was um, very happy to write um, a quite enthusiastic uh, um, review about the book. So then she is lecturer uh, or presenter on the next event in June, the executive IP management days in Strasbourg, where she talks about trademarks in the digital world, which is really a topic on close to her heart. She has a monthly newsletter. It's called join me on a sip. And this sip is written S and IP. And definitely you need a big pot of coffee when you read that newsletter because it's fully packed with information and very useful uh, insights. So then she's, she, she publishes every day on LinkedIn. I don't know when she's doing that, uh, but wonderful posts, very lots of insights there. She's committee chair at I3PM for the quality and IP management. And very soon, um, she she will publish um, a, a case study on IP management about a Norwegian company, Laadal Medical, with lots of insights to the uh, yeah majority level of IP management. Okay, so that were more than three minutes thirty about just the activities which um, which come into my mind when I think about Maria. So, but now Maria, tell us what you're doing when you're not doing all of that things. <laughs> well, after three minutes of talking about what I'm doing aside from my job, let me maybe give a, a very quick introduction about the actual job that I have. <laughs> um, so I am a, I'm a partner in the law firm here in Belgium, and uh, I'm also a, a founding partner of my own uh, strategy consulting practice, which is focused mainly on the IP strategy matters. Um, originally, I come from, from Latvia, and this is where I started my uh, IP career almost 20 years ago. Actually, this June, I will be celebrating my 20 years in IP. So it's been quite a journey, quite an intensive one. And um, yeah, and then I arrived here in Belgium, and here I am, indeed doing all those, uh, all those things that you mentioned and a whole bunch of other items on my agenda yes, when do i do it i do it uh, um well it's actually it's, it's a matter of of planning we all have the same 24 hours so it's the matter of focus you don't need more time you need more focus and um well i can proudly say that i guess i kind of hacked the system <laughs> i managed to have that focus so and maybe, maybe now we can switch to to the focus of 
today. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> no, I, I just want to mention that the uh, I, I, right now I'm, I, I wrote a, a guideline on how to create customer journeys for IP expert. I will publish that uh, very soon. And, um, and 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 for that I needed a, a, a practical example, and I choose Martin Wilming and you. Um, on on purpose because I really like how you how you connect the different dots um, for your client journey, so to speak, and and I like really your style that always when 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 I am follow you on your designed and created client journey, I'm always sure that I'll be with you simply because of the of the design which you created. So you have your your own design language. In, in what you're doing there. And so I'm, I'm really, I'm deeply impressed. So I, I never made that uh, in, to, to this extent. And this is extremely homogeneous and, and very good. It's, a, it's really, a, it, it helps um, for people in this confusing IP world, which is, has so many facets um, that uh, it, it creates trust. When I follow you, when I follow your, your client journeys, which you created, uh, I can always be sure that I'll be with you, and you will take care. That that is that is the message. And I, yeah, I just want to say that uh, this is this is a brilliant work which you did. And I invite everybody um, simply to follow you and to to look at these details of a very um, uh, interesting, uh, very well made, crafted uh, uh, client journey. And that that leads me to social media because you're obviously. A, very active on social media and um uh, and when it comes to to copyright there so one of your one of your um, uh, specialities so then then there are lots of yeah misunderstandings misconceptions uh from you know from influencers from from sme ceos from experts from other topics which have nothing to do with ip maybe so what would you say what is the um, what are the most important misconceptions in that environment? Well, there is, of course, a lot of misconceptions, as you mentioned. I would uh, explicitly specify maybe three of them. The first one would be that uh, there is a belief that if it is on social media, it's just free to use, free for all. Just uh, take it and use it. But that's not true. Because obviously, and this should be actually should be a reflex for everyone, that if there is something, if there is something created, someone has created it, and that someone has copyright. And believing that it's not the case, this is probably the biggest misconception. Another one related to that, if, for instance, there is something that has been widely shared, something that has become viral, viral, for example, then there is a belief that, oh, yeah, if everybody is sharing it, I can do that as well. But that's also a misconception in the sense that, look, if everybody around me violating, that doesn't give me the right to violate as well. Uh, it's uh, another big one. And uh, finally, the, the third one that I would especially pinpoint is, uh, and this is a tricky one. Uh, there is a belief that if you credit the author, then you're not violating. But this is not true. If you credit the author, the only thing you are not violating is, well, the attribution, the right of attribution, which is the moral right. But copyright consists of moral rights and consists of economic rights. And just the fact that you say that, look, this is from, I don't know, John Doe, huh? this doesn't mean that you can use it because if you didn't obtain the permission from that John Doe, then you can't. And, and it, those three, I would say, that are probably the most widespread and the most uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. prominent I mean, ones. When you ask me, I would say this is the 99% of the perception out there. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. And, and typically nothing happens, right? So um, what I see is that that people use content from others and, and uh, don't ask for any permission. Um, I mean, I think we have to distinguish. Nothing happens until it does. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, that's that's what I would like to ask. I mean, yeah. obviously, we have to distinguish here. Um, is it is it a kind of private use, or is it a kind of economic use? And and, and obviously, this is not so easy to say. So we have mm -hmm. these influences, obviously. Um, 
who have to to uh, to give a credit to 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 show that they make a professional work with what they do but even when people think they are they are private from time to time they are private from a from a mm. legal standpoint can you explain that a little bit well there is a difference of course like you mentioned between the private use and the economic use uh, but it's also linked to the jurisdiction because like in the in the us there's a concept of fair use in in the uk there's the concept of fair dealing in europe it's different in europe there is you have by definition you have copyright and you have certain exceptions from copyright, so exceptions that allow you to use copyrighted work without uh, without permission, and one indeed one of those uh, exceptions is private use. But private use is a very narrowly defined concept. So it's not like if an influencer is is using it on its private account, that doesn't mean that it's a private use. I'll give you an example. One of the uh, private use exceptions, for example, is educational context. So, for instance, if a student is making a presentation for, I don't know, for a course uh, and takes a picture, just a picture, even perhaps with a watermark on that, and just uses it in a presentation. Well, this is an educational context. Uh, yeah, not so good ethically, but it's okay. It's fine. There's no problem. If, however, the same educational context, you have a professor professor also for the purely presentation given to students is able to use it also no problem here but now i am adding additional level of complexity and hence actually the classic uh, expression of, of lawyers it depends uh, just to illustrate that it really depends you take the same professor you take the same presentation but you change the context if the professor is giving that presentation at a conference for which he is paid this is no longer the exception of the private use for educational purposes. If the same professor is using the same presentation to present in a company where afterwards he will be giving, for instance, consulting services, this is no longer the exception. And it can be that the audience in reality is the same. It could be that you'll be giving, for instance, the, the presentation to MIPLM students, and then those same MIPLM students are in the, in the company where you go. It's the same students, same professor, same presentation. The context is different, and it's no longer the exception. I so you see, there's those nuances which, which make it, yeah, it's so layered. It's like an onion. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's so many layers to fill there. Yeah, I mean... I mean, obviously, we have to be very careful, and and this is this is uh, especially on LinkedIn because mm -hmm. LinkedIn, first of all, is not it's not like Instagram or Facebook, where which comes obviously from a private a, a real private use. I mean, we mm -hmm. see the fact that on TikTok, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, we see these influencers who make a business out of having followers. Um, but on LinkedIn, the, the situation is definitely from, from the starting point completely different because on LinkedIn, people act as professionals and, um, and they look for professional contacts and they look for business there. So we cannot ignore that whatever we do on LinkedIn has a certain business context. And as you said, that changes a lot about this exemption of private use um, so you can say nothing is private in the in the classical meaning of it uh, as when it is on linkedin because you want to create yourself as a professional as an expert um, and and that is obviously not completely private of course but the thing is that there is also a shade to it that look if you have you do something perhaps violating, perhaps you're violating copyright or not violating, uh, yeah, whether whether the copyright owner will actually go for you <laughs> trying to, to defend his or her interests, that's another question. But you also have the reputation question. And the reputation question, your reputation, if you are obviously using the, uh, the copyright content without permission, you're damaging your own reputation and, and reputation is something that you built for for many many years and you can uh, just have it gone in a minute so yeah you you have to be very careful and uh, like the article that i've written for for the ip business academy on the topic uh, it was dedicated especially from the perspective of not the influencers but the smes that are then on 
um, on social media and uh, want to use uh, want to use the copyright uh, content. And actually, the bottom line there is that for as much as possible, just use your original. I mean, uh, it's or make sure if you're using someone else's content, then make sure that it, you either get a permission or that it's a public domain. And with a public domain, you also have to be very careful because what is public domain in one, in let's say, in one country, in one jurisdiction, may not be the public domain in the other. So there's there's a lot of nuances there. So and. It's best to to always err on the on the side of caution because uh, if you're not sure, ask for permission. That's that's basically the the, yeah. the main uh, the main punchline here. Yeah, and there are yeah. of course sources. For example, I'm I'm using uh, in my newsletter. I'm using vision visual capitalist um, mm -hmm. um, pictures uh, figures and and they. And, and Visual Capitalist offers that, yeah. So, uh, like Unsplash, so that is a platform which says, okay, you can use the content, uh, you just have to cite. So then, the copyright, uh, the the economic part of the copyright, is uh, uh, solved, and you can use it. Um, but this this is the exemption. So typically, you have to ask. Um, when yeah. it is not well, there's the Creative Commons. There's a Creative Commons for certain content where you see if it's if it's a Creative Commons licenses, those CC. Um, it kind of depends on what's behind the CC because you can have uh, that you you have to give the attribution. There are situations where you can share but but cannot modify. So you you have to see the licenses and also as as you mentioned for the platforms, what you also have to to have a look at is the terms and conditions of the platform because you have yes you have the right is the laws you have the copyright laws but you also have the terms and conditions of a platform which you agree to when you sign up for the platform and no one reads those those no, <laughs> in reality however there is uh, there is some small print there and uh well certain platforms are more permissive certain platforms are more restrictive so you you really have to to actually look into them and yeah. on top of that platforms change them <laughs> from time to time and they can yeah, do it just unilaterally tricky. so that's tricky that's really tricky oh, I, I i had a lot of thoughts when and on the first of January, I made a post about um, Steamboat Willie, so the uh, the Disney figure, which later on became Mickey Mouse, and mm -hmm. um, and this this original Mickey Mouse does not look like Mickey Mouse so really, and yeah. I I decided to make fun out of it and and made a and asked ChatGPT uh, to create me a picture uh, where mm -hmm. where I have Mickey Mouse on a couch. After the party is over, <laughs> and uh, so with Happy New Year, but now you are unfortunately in the public domain. And what what ChatGPT did is it created a a, um, a visual, a picture with the modern uh, um, Mickey Mouse. Okay, so I said mm -hmm. again and again, I want the old one, but obviously it is not on the training data. And so it created yeah. me a modern Mickey Mouse, and I decided to do it to 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 publish it at least. At least when this they ask me, I tell you, so what? <laughs> but um, uh, obviously, this is a copyright infringement. And, yeah. and I mean, I would say it is important to understand that it is my copyright infringement and not the one from Microsoft or OpenAI just because they created it. This is one aspect, but the next aspect is that I used it and I cannot uh, go away with it to say, yeah, this is the result from, from OpenAI and I asked OpenAI for the old Mickey Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I think that yeah. Is well, important. with Mickey Mouse, I saw I saw a lot of discussions and and again a lot of misconceptions. Because in case of Mickey Mouse, what is very important is that there is layers again. There's layers of rights. It's different in different jurisdictions. And on top of that, uh, Disney obviously has a lot of trademarks. And here we go to another topic, uh, which we may discuss another day, because, yeah, well, you can have copyright on the on the idea, on the, well, not the idea, the materialization of that idea, uh, the image, the specific image, but that image can be protected by, by trademark. And that image can be protected by design rights, depends on whatever applies. So it's not, 
that simple to say that look uh, it's already in the public domain i can use it uh, not necessarily and especially especially not uh, so you you should never use anything from uh, from disney so no so no, this, no 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 disney no apple those those two are are, are notorious in their in their approach so towards uh, <laughs> yeah never <laughs> no i mean i mean what we learn is that um this is also when when it comes to uh you know um uh, user machine interfaces software apps logos mm -hmm. whatever so there are plenty of opportunities to protect that um yeah. and um and uh, to a certain extent you should do it and uh, you should always assume uh, when you use anything and this this is my next question to you when when we talk about potential risks um, for SMEs when they use content, um, whichever content, okay? Uh, and they are not sure whether it is protected. So I would say that general recommendation should be assume that it is protected. Uh, so exactly. more and more companies make their homework um, and mm -hmm. uh, and that means when, when you like an icon, you like a... Uh, you like a visualization, you like an, an, uh, a button, a form of a button uh, in, in, in an app or whatever, you should... It can assume, be protected. Yeah, exactly. And try to try to find out how it could be, how it might be protected. So what, what, what would you say is that how can we give a kind of general recommendation for SMEs to um, yeah to mitigate at least the risks which they have on on social media platforms. Well, I would say that by definition, try to use your own content. That's that's like the safest way. But then again, if I say your own content, then it kind of depends on who created it, because it can be that it's your employee and you have uh, well employee relationship with uh, with the person and then it depends on whatever is in which jurisdiction you are because uh, the rules towards that differ per jurisdiction obviously and what what is written in your contract with that employee in case it's a freelancer that's a different story if that freelancer for instance created that post for you or that logo for you or that whatever it all depends on whatever you put in the agreement with that freelancer so you have to be very vigilant about what what rights do you keep for yourself and what rights other people might have even for stuff that you would assume that for example if a freelancer is creating something for you and you're paying for it then it's yours but it's getting not you can get the work but it doesn't mean that you get the copyright it has to be transferred to you and if it has not been done then you are in problems another thing to 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 that is uh well, yeah, you like everybody is now using the artificial intelligence tools artificial intelligence tools can create something that resembles the copyright protected uh, object and then you might land in troubles. And yes, it's IE that created it, but troubles are yours. And the copyright uh, owner, the copyright holder will come after you, not after the uh, the open AI, for instance. Huh? So that, that's shape to that. Um, another thing in the context of SMEs that I can come up with is, um, well, there's a lot nowadays, it's not only SMEs, it's actually all, all companies out there. Um, they're using the user-generated content. Like you have fans, you have uh, some people that, that love your brand, for instance, and they, they create content for you. There are several risks there. Uh, one is just purely brand perspective. Uh, that user, that fan of yours might do something that doesn't align with your vision, with your values, with your, with your whatever. Yeah. And here the good idea would be to actually have those values and have those values as a i don't know as a brand book whatever i mean if you don't take control if you don't don't decide on the rules then there will be no rules and then that will be just trying to 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 put out fires so it's up to you as a as a brand owner to create that narrative and to steer that narrative and steer also the user generated content another I mean, aspect to it immediately uh, sorry I'll, I'll i'll finish the thought uh, another aspect to that the you the actual use of the user generated content i mean it's it's in a way a, a low ticket marketing 
So it's very tempting for SME to just take that content that someone generated for you, huh? talking about your brand, and just use it in your own marketing efforts. But this is also wrong because that's copyright of that user that generated that user generated content. So you also have to ask permission there. So actually, the bottom line that I would say is that in case of doubt, ask permission. <laughs> that's yeah. like the yeah. the red thread of the whole of the whole thing i mean that is that is really something i, I just want to uh, just want to add that, that that i mean this this user generated content in general is a is a big issue and um it comes from uh, yeah pokemon or whatever so this big uh let's say gaming market or fan fiction from the book disney market. harry but potter meantime, whatever yeah meantime, we have forklift companies or excavator companies or whatever so many other companies which have fans real fans for these machines yeah. for 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 certain use cases and today everybody can create additional content with that and and then you you see that you like it but then the question is can you use it just because your product is used in that uh, fan fiction or fan content and that is exactly what you're saying that that's a tricky issue and you should not assume yeah, that just because, just that's because it is done for you so to speak yeah. that you that you can own it i mean it's the same situation like like when you have a, a service provider and the service provider mm -hmm. uh, gives you a certain creative uh work uh, and and then um, you don't own the copyright on the work. Um, uh, that that yeah. is a completely different. By the way, we had that here in Munich uh, at the airport. It, it is a, a famous um, uh, architect which made the Munich airport. And uh, it turned out over the time, very, very soon after the airport was open, that the airport is too small. And then uh, uh, the companies, the, uh, the owner of the airport, started to change things on the architecture. And, and then the architecture sued the owner, uh, uh, which uh, to, to a certain part, it is the city of Munich, uh, about copyright infringement. And he won uh, uh, that uh, it, the, 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 the owner of the airport is not allowed to to um, to change the overall appearance of this copyright protected work. So just just yeah. to just to mention, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so that's the, that's, a, that's a curious case, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the, it, I mean, this misconceptions is not just an SME. It it goes up to the state of Bavaria, which is also an owner <laughs> from from the airport, and to the to the city of Munich, and the. Unfortunately, they don't have lawyers, or especially they don't have IP lawyers to tell them that they should be careful with what they're doing there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, uh, copyright, the problem, the general problem with copyright is that as compared to registered rights, like you have you have trademark, it's registered in a, it's in a database, everything is clear. It's registered for specific goods and services, tada. You have a patent, which is for the invention. You have a nicely, nice document printed that. In case of copyright, you have copyright from the moment that you have materialized whatever was in your head. So your idea. Yeah, copyright doesn't protect ideas. And here again, there is a lot of misconceptions about that because people believe that, that copyright protects story. ideas. No, it doesn't. It doesn't protect ideas. It protects when I already put that idea into some sort of form, then that form will be protected by copyright. So, and but the whole proving of the thing and, and, and proving your point, proving that you were the one, this is tricky. This is where it becomes where it becomes complicated. And that that leads yeah. us to the to to the next question, which I have, because uh, let let's turn the the table, okay? And mm -hmm. let's say we we have an SME, which has created uh, a copyright protected material, manuals, videos, visuals, um, mm -hmm. textbook, whatever, um, and now. Um, they realize that uh, that there is material out there which is maybe a copyright infringement. So maybe because 
it's it's hard to say to a certain extent. So what is a what is a new generation, a, a new a, a new a new work, and um, and what is just a copy in in terms of copy and paste, and and so so how should they behave? How can they? What 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 can help uh, an SME mm -hmm. to make a certain evaluation? whether it is a mm -hmm. copyright infringement or not. And when they assume it is, what could they do? Mm -hmm. Well, first, a little nuance again, talking about misconceptions. In case of copyright, I can create something and you can create something and it can be almost the same. But if you have individually, just having, have, having not seen whatever I did, made the same thing, there is no violation. So in copyright you need to have the access to the original and you need to just copy just blatantly copy then it's a violation so that's, I mean, that's, a inter I mean, that's, that's an that's, intermezzo that's, that's the wonderful discussion in music right so then when yeah. somebody is uh, uh, accused about to copy a, so, so, some some notes yeah so not that mm. many and then the the defendant says sorry i have heard that and i have not realized that i've heard it yeah <laughs> so you, are, you have access to the original, but not consciousness. So I'm unconscious. I have heard it, but I don't know whether it is so. <laughs> it will be. Uh, it will be up to the court to decide on 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 that. Absolutely. But coming back to your question, um, first and foremost, I would say that uh, SME before even a decision of whatever the next steps will be. The first thing that uh, an SME has to do is to document. To document, take screenshots, uh, take copy those those URLs, make prints, whatever. So there has to be some sort of of proof, some sort of documentation for that. That's quintessential. Now the next step, I would say, before again, before there's any actions, is to evaluate: Does it make sense? That's actually my, my main question in the context of, uh, of intellectual property in general. And you know I've been repeating that question in, in uh, many instances. Does it make sense? If you go to the court, for example, you know that you are an SME and, and someone's violating your copyright. Now what? Are you ready to go to, go to court for that? Do you have resources to go to court for that? Do you have time? Do you have money? Do you, have, do you, do you really want to do that? And what are you going to achieve? You're going to achieve that they will stop using it? And that's just your ego? That's just your, your good feeling or what? So you have to have that clear understanding of what is it all about. Now, the next step would be to, to contact the infringer because it could be that there is no, uh, like, no bad face in there. That could be that they're actually, yeah, they used it because they thought that they could. But, uh, yeah, now that you're telling them that, that they can't, Maybe they're willing to cooperate. Maybe they're even willing to take a license from you for that. And then it's going to be additional um, cash to you. I mean, it's good. And, and then everybody's happy and, uh, and you get extra cash. Or in case the infringer says that, no, huh, uh, there's no infringement, you can write an official cease and desist letter that's practiced in uh, basically all jurisdictions that you, you write an official statement that, look, I state that you violated. Here's the, the, the proof. Let's say you attach those screenshots that look, there's a proof of, of, of violation. If you don't stop, I officially warn you that if you don't stop or if you don't, don't take a license for that, I will go to court. But then you have to also be prepared to kind of go to court because that, that's going to be then the next step. The next step is actually going to the court. But when I mentioned that going to the court has to be like really evaluated, uh, yes, you can claim damages. But I have to be, if some courts are very, uh, you know, uh, kind of not willing to give you those damages unless you prove them very, very good. And yes, your hurt feelings can get some monetary uh, compensation, but usually it's not that much, at least not as much as you would hope for. So you then have to re really prove that damages have taken place and have, have enough documents for the court to, uh, uh, to actually act on that. So it has to be like really evaluated. And before you go that way, 
you have to explore the other options and you have to explore at least contacting the infringer and at least trying trying the out of court perhaps also the adr so the, the alternative dispute resolution because i had those i had uh, myself i had several cases on on the pure copyright uh, matters where i acted as a mediator and then yeah, we solved the issue. <laughs> they solved the issue. I, I facilitated the, the whole thing. And the solution that, that in the end was achieved was something that would never be, be able to, to achieve in court. So, yeah, it's, uh, there are options. There are possibilities. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when you escalate the things to go to court, so also the other party... Uh, think you you are kind of um, aggressive on on what you're doing there. And, yeah, that it can uh, also affect your reputation in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. of course. I mean, uh, just just to mention, there is another possibility uh, of uh, so simply you don't want to give. Uh, so you you want that the other party is stopping that, be, and and you don't want to give a license simply. So you don't mm -hmm. want to, to. So you want to stop that kind of misuse when it is a misuse. I mean, that is that is always the the, mm -hmm. the, the tricky question. Uh, not just the damage itself. It, it simply is it a misuse, and as you said, um, simply the fact that it could be that mm -hmm. both parties developed that on their own created it on their own uh, uh, could lead to the fact that it is not an infringement of a copyright. Um, so th exactly. that's one of the really tricky issues with copyrights, I would say, mm -hmm. um, be simply because it's not registered uh, uh, and uh, yeah, different True. True. different way of thinking here. Um, and as a as a professional evaluator, um, I can tell you it is so hard to determine damages and to prove damages. So that is really, yeah. and even when you see that with your own eyes, that that there is something proving it, that it is causal, that there's a causality to uh, to this infringing yeah. act, that that is that is extremely That's hell. <laughs> the pure hell, exactly. So, and it's so emotional. So you see that the how much they suffer. Yeah, um, yeah. When, when they feel they are infringed, and and how big that is, and then you come as a as a and, and, and additionally, if you if you, for instance, if I'm talking from a perspective of a of a lawyer, then for instance, acting for for the SME, if you then tell the SME that look, there's a way how to prove the the, the damages if I invite the expert, but I need to pay the expert, so there's uh, there's additional cost. Uh, there's yeah. even even before there is a discussion about them, there is additional cost to to proving them. Huh? So exactly, yeah, exactly. there is there is a lot so of complexity it, in this sense. As you as you say, so the experience tells you uh, try to check is it is it its worth, uh, yeah, and how to how to um, how to get a, a, a solution for the whole thing outside of a court. I mean that is that is really as a general recommendation. I would say that that makes a lot of sense. Um, so uh, I have here a wonderful question for you. Uh, I would like to pick that up. Thank you, Sveda. Um, the question is: What is your opinion on blockchain for uh, creating evidence um, on on the usage of of um, copyright protected material? Uh, do you think that it is an efficient tool for SMEs that it could be used? I mean, it is a lot of you. It's a lot used for for trade secrets. Uh, so the question is, what do you think about the copyrights, co copyright protected works? Well, I do believe that that uh, all the technologies available now, uh, they are they can be used and they can be used to the advantage. It's like there's also a technology which is the DRM, the Digital Rights Management, uh, which then also is a technology that that uh, helps. In case of, of copyright, blockchain as well. Uh, however, and we can come back to the same question that we've been discussing a moment ago. Uh, they could have created the same thing just independently. And you're back to square one. Yes, you have that that uh, blockchain proof, which is the immutable record. But so what? So it's like, yeah, those tools are available and they have to be used if they can be used. However, are they going to be super efficient in all cases? My classic answer: It depends. Yeah, obviously. It could be that they will I mean, be. So 
it's not an excuse that it depends it is a fact here <laughs> yeah it's just it's just a fact that's the whole thing it's just a fact it's just a fact and it will depend on a lot of aspects it will depend on the jurisdiction that i already mentioned several times today it will depend on the on the particular particular nuances of this particular situation this particular case and these particular parties so it's it's very hard to say like very generally uh, yes it will be uh, yeah in certain cases it will definitely yeah and I think we we have already created some 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 general recommendations which really help right. as a you know as a, as a general guideline I mean um, uh, obviously we have to look at the uh, distinctive cases but um, but there is also a general recommendation as you said be careful. Uh, when you're using that, don't assume that just because the others are doing it, you can do it or you should do it. Um, try to be original. Try to use your own things. Uh, a quotation is not enough, and, and so on. Mm -hmm. So I, I mean, I mean, there is a lot of lot of um, general recommendations which can help in the daily life, uh, uh, obviously, and uh -huh. they can also help to create certain procedures in the company in the in the marketing um, departments and the social media departments. Um, yeah, those procedures are actually very important. As I said mm -hmm. already, that if you take if you take that that responsibility on yourself, that look, I'm gonna steer it. I'm gonna steer my narrative. I'm gonna steer whatever is 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 allowed. Then you also have, if you're working, for example, with the marketing agencies, you have something to tell them that look, this I find acceptable. This I find not acceptable. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This this is how you should act. So it's up to you to take that control, to assume that control, and to to design that approach as you see it, your vision in this respect. No, I would like to 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 use the the final minutes which we have. Um, to talk a little bit about future developments, what 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 your impression, what your perspective is on on this intersection between social media, copyright law, and and the application and the affected uh, and SMEs which are affected of that. Uh, what you what is your uh, vision? What what kind of preparation um, or which kind of scenarios they should prepare for? Well, first, the bad news is going to get more complicated. <laughs> it's going to get more complicated because we're going to have more and more IE creators content and we're going to have a more and more attempts at trying to to regulate it all. So it will become even if, at this point in time, it's quite layered and quite complex. Sometimes it will become more complex. And yes, you have this those tendencies of of saying like uh, I thought it was OpenAI that that said that look it was actually not possible to get all those permissions so we kind of didn't. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was difficult to get those permissions, but you kind of had to. So it those things that there will be a push for maybe dropping the whole copyright there will be there is already that push and it will enhance on the other hand there will be attempts of trying to regulate it all uh, on top you will have all those platforms that will change their rules and that will try to somehow adapt somehow get themselves out of of, of uh, potentially muddy waters so all those things uh, there will be more user-generated content and and i do believe that smes have to be very vigilant there and like really have well again have some sort of a vision of how they're gonna how they're gonna interact how they're gonna how they're gonna use that how they're gonna promote that and so on and so forth so all those things um yeah i guess that's 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 along the general lines but uh, yeah the future will be interesting <laughs> <laughs> in any case, yeah, it will absolutely. be. I have here, unfortunately, I don't have the name. I have here a LinkedIn user and you should, uh, it would be great when you could answer to that comment um, about the early days of the eBay auctions and when when people uh, used third party photos for uh, promoting the products which they want to sell. So that a classic example. Um, of uh, misuse of a copyright, obviously, in a, in a good faith. It's, it's it's obviously not a bad faith, but it is a it it, it, it is a copyright infringement, definitely. Um, it is. So yeah. Thank you, <laughs> thank you very much, <laughs> Maria, for for <sighs> this perspective. Yes, I I can't agree more. It will be much more complex, and um, I mean, 
saying something stupid like it was too complicated to get all that permissions i mean what does that mean i'm i'm starting a, a atomic bomb and i said sorry I, it was too late to ask anybody i mean <laughs> no essentially that 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 that's the same thing eh? that's uh, not how it technology like that. can work uh, uh, obviously we, we have that regulation and uh you have to ask for otherwise uh, it is simply forbidden and uh, sooner or later you have to pay for it um uh, that that that's for sure and that is what's just what reality <laughs> what the big tags are doing yeah they just have they have so much money that they simply do it and ask later for permission and that is that that's another discussion but definitely not okay <laughs> yeah okay thank you very much for this wonderful time um to to the audience thank you for your questions for your comments um maria and i we, we will stay on linkedin and try to to answer to your comments thank you maria for this wonderful insight and um we we see each other again on linkedin and i invite all the others to follow you to get all that wonderful insights from your experience thank you very much and enjoy thank the you. evening <laughs>